Hello and welcome to SDN Tech Forum. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put DNAC in ICE integration. And this is our very first video uh, when we start building software defined access solution. In my earlier video of SDA access series, I have discussed all the technology which plays pivotal role in the solution. Now we will see how to deploy SDA access solution. And putting DNAC and ICE integration in place is the first step because as you can see on my screen, ICE is an integral part of SDA solution. Cisco ICE uses PX grid technology. Initially it was vendor specific, but now it is IETF standard. So you can read about it um, going to our IETF website. Uh, so it uses uh, PX grid technology to share the context information with the participant in the ecosystem and in this case DNAC is the participant all right so it's a pub publisher subscriber kind of relationship so DNAC subscribe to ICE and ICE publishes the con contextual information whatever uh, DNAC is subscribed to so contextual information can be multiple things like your policies user information security related information profiling information right on day one, DNAC is not asking for all those information. It's only asking for policy related information. Okay. So Cisco PX Grid provide an API which is secured via SSL certificate system. So there is the communication channel is secured via um, certificate exchange and DNA Center uses uh, has automated the certificate process to allow user to simply and easily integrate DNA Center to ICE in secure manner. So the integration, if you look uh, from the deployment perspective, is so simple that all the complexities of this security, uh, certificate exchange, uh, um, uh, discovering dif different ICE persona and subscribing to a particular uh, uh, con context, everything has been masked. So entire complexity is masked, it's all automated and secured with SSL. So on my screen, the picture is very simple. You have Cisco DNAC, you have Cisco ICE, and you have a form to fill up on DNAC itself, uh, which where you provide your username, password, and it actually go out uh, to ICE using API calls where with a designated port and SSH. So it uses both, both the methods and uh, the trust being established and start uh, sharing the contextual information which it will require when we deploy uh, SD access solution uh, for our uh, policies and segmentations okay so what are the some prerequisite thing you need to keep in mind is uh, ice uh, user and password so ice has like two uh, fronts right uh, two and um, you can log into the GUI at the same time you can log in um, to the CLI right so you have a web front end and then you have a CLI terminal uh, access both the password need to be same and why they need to be same I'll touch base upon that enabling ICE certificate uh, authority so if you are using internal CA you need to enable that if you are using external CA you need to enable that and I'll show you where uh, but in nutshell the ICE should support certificate authority um, whether it's internal or inter uh, external and uh, the i the user you are using to integrate with ice that should have ers admin privilege so external restful api i'll talk about that uh, the user uh, whatever username you are trying to uh, uh, use while integration that has ers admin privilege and of course you have to have PX grid services enabled on ICE. Okay, so if you are running distributed deployment, like uh, if you are not aware about uh, the nitty gritty of ICE, you I, you can visit my video or see my watch my video ICE overview where I touch base upon that. So ICE may have distributed persona, that means uh, different roles been held by different nodes and they are distributed. So the question has been asked when you are trying to integrate a DNAC. The DNAC gives you a simple form where you can just present one IP address, username and password. But you, if your ICE has di distributed deployment, 
which node to use whether it is px grid if it is it's a pan or psn it's always a question so the answer is use your pan node for integration dnac can figure out the rest of the deployment on its own and i'll show you in debug how it do, uh, do that okay so use your pan ip address for integration since dna allow you to specify only one entry while integration use primary pan that's just what i said dna can turn discover the entire deployment via ers api call and it actually ssh to some of the personas like px grid to get the uh, trust established and uh, get the contextual information also the failover so if it is a distributed persona that mean your primary may have, uh, you have primary secondary deployment so if primary fails dnac it is it is actually transparent to dnac and dnac know that okay i need to start talking to secondary so it's a seamless uh, why i username and password C, uh, cli and ui ui password need to be same is like dnac only gives you one place to password entry it builds initial tr trust by ssh into the eyes and then it uses api calls uh, and api calls run over goi to discover the deployment so you can see for api uses goi password and uh, trust establ getting established using ssh that's why hence since we have only one form you should keep your uh, both passwords same all right now it's a demo time so let's go back to uh, eyes and uh, dnac see what you have to do there and then i'll walk you through the logs what you can see to understand this process in detail okay so let's go to my eyes first this is my eyes what you want to see is the things what we just discussed right so deployment you need to know what kind of deployment it is my deployment is standalone so go to there capture fqdn this is what you will need uh when you do the integration and make sure the px grid services are enabled so you can see i have a standalone deployment uh, i have i know my fqdn and px grid information uh, is enabled the second thing what you want to do is going to <coughs> deployment and certificate make sure that your certificate authority is enabled so you have internal ca external ca i am using internal so you can see this is enabled uh, if it is disabled your trust will not establish okay the third thing is user uh, with ers admin privilege so what you have, where you can check that administration uh, system admin access <coughs> within admin access administration admin user so look for the user which you want to use for integration i am using admin the default admin user and if you try to edit this you will see that uh, it has super admin uh, access uh, at the same time you can make it uh, ers admin so i am i have provided a high level of uh, privilege uh, second thing what you want to do is checking if your ers services are enabled right so for that settings administration settings come to ers and you enable ers for read and write and disable csrf if you want to know more about uh, ers services there is a link so a one sd uh, sdk is available click on that link it will bring up this and it will actually tell you what uh, <clears throat> to how to perform different uh, things and ers uses port 9060 so by default so make sure that um, you have this open in your network okay so these are the few things you have to do uh, at i side make ers available make sure your username you are using it has <coughs> ers admin or super admin privileges you have light right level of licenses that mean you, know, you have license for px grid services okay all these things now let's go to dna center where here the main thing happened right <coughs> and we will come back to ice under px grid so in dna center 
what do you have to do? You have to go to DNS Center launch page, system settings. Within system settings, click on set, uh, settings, authentication and policy server, and you can say add a um, server. And here you define some IP address. So we are not going to use a real uh, time integration because I already have integration in place. But what you have to do is you have to simply, so you can see I cannot highlight it. Why? Because we can use only one ICE integration and I already have ICE integration in place. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm going to edit it <coughs> so that I can show you all the settings. So you can see this, this is the IP address of my ICE server. Uh, it's a shared secret between uh, use between uh, DNAC and uh, uh, ICE. And this is my username and password, FQDN and my subscriber name. So ICE may receive multiple uh, PX Grid subscription uh, and to identify which DNAC it is, you can put a subscriber name. So it is actually using username, password and SSH um, using that thing. So once you put all the information here, toggle the button that it is a Cisco ICE server and say apply, the things will start it uh, the dnac will try to subscribe to ice and then you can change the uh, once the status change to active that means the ice integration is place and how to verify that first thing is it should go active second is if you go to pro, uh, policy you should see all the scalable group <clears throat> whatever you have defined on ice they will start reflecting here so now if you define one uh, scalable group in ICE, they will be uh, uh, reflected here. So now let's go back to ICE and see what happened. So I am here in ICE administration PX grid services. You can see that my DNAC, that's my subscriber name, I subscribe uh, as two, for two streams, one for NDP and one for uh, just my vendor name. Okay. Uh, what else I want to show you here is um, The logs basically so one thing to check is if you look at the trust sec and uh, component <coughs> security options here all the security groups whatever we have defined since we have integration in place you will start seeing that in DNA center so if I add a security group that will be re read by DNA center because I am subscribed for um, subscribe DNA Center has subscribed to IIS for SGT context, so that will be given there at the same time. Policies if you define the policy, but in SDA, we define our policy in DNA when we don't define in IIS, but you can do in ISO, of course. So now let's go and see what happened when we fill the form at DNA Center and hit apply. Okay, so two logs you can run. Uh, <clears throat> this is a little uh, detailed but uh, I just want you to look at this uh, one log is network design services and we are grabbing eyes I just want to show you what are the different uh, things happen underlined right so it is using ice username password all the information what you supplied in the form so it is using all those information and do what it generate a, a one-time token and initiate trust establishment it SSH to the pan and then step so these are all the logs uh, from the uh, DNA center itself so these are not typed information these are debug logs I have just made it a little clean so that we can understand the steps so um, DNA center SSH to I span or the node which you supplied the information then it try to do trust establishment put the store store the i certificate and sending trust established notification so now at this point of time certi certificate has been exchanged now discovery of node happens since it is, if it is a distributed persona what it will do it will do a ers a api call uh, and then trying to find the deployment so it will query eyes that how your deployment looks like and uh, it will figure out who what is my pan 
what is my secondary node, where is PX node resides, and all those information, uh, ICE will reply with that. Okay, so that's how it actually uh, uncover the ICE uh, details. There is another level of debug you can run Max Detail Service Identity Service uh, Identity Manager PX Grid Services. So this is more around like how. Um, DNEC is trying to authenticate and if there is any pro issues with the authentication or certificate. So those things uh, you can find in that log. So these two logs are really uh, useful uh, while troubleshooting any issues with DNEC and ICE integration. Second thing what you can do is um, you can actually sometime if it is uh, so you go to system, PX grid services, and permissions. So sometime when you actually, sorry, settings. So once you submit the request from DNAC, uh, sometime you have this individual thing that you have to allow or approve the subs subscription request. But in my case, I'm saying automatically approve new certificate based accounts. That means when DNAC make the request, it is automatically approved otherwise you'll see the client hanging in here and you have an option to just select that and click on approve but i have kind of like created an auto approve that's why the integration didn't need this extra step so this was a short video i hope uh, you are um, feeling confident and we will continue our journey with sda solution uh, build up thank you